if they ever make another Mario Brothers movie, I would love for there to be this really intense moment. And Mario says, it's me, Mario. It's a me. Like, like his I'm Batman moment? Yeah, is it, yeah. Who are you? It's a me. I'm Mario. <laughs> I'm a gonna win. <laughs> Greetings, friends, and welcome to Unboxing. This is the satellite show, Welcome to the Basement. We open our mail, and we thank our viewers, people who go to welcometothebasementshow.com and contribute to support the show. People like who? People like Corey, Danielle, Christopher, Francesco, Mark, Tito, Jonathan, Andrew, Eugenie, Brian Kelly Illustrations, Bridget, Austin, Jared, Grace, Tabitha, Brandon, William, Scott, Benjamin, Malcolm, Kevin, Sarah, Dan, Christine, Kathleen, David, Betty, Mara, Marie, and Mario. Well, thank you, all of you, thank you. That's not all of them. We'll get to the rest later in the show. Postcards. Yep. This is from Sonia. Hello, Matt and Craig. As the days get colder, I find myself watching more movies than normal, especially slower stuff. Oh, there's a mountain. That's the slowest thing you can have. <laughs> oh, I had it and I lost it. Sean from Vibrant Victoria, British Columbia. Not so much a postcard for Vibrant Victoria as the ferry between Victoria and Seattle. Off to see Sarah for her early birthday party. Happy birthday, Sarah. Uh, the Victoria Clipper. I applied for a job working on that back when I was in Seattle. Didn't get it. Alana from Amado, Arizona. Big fan of the show. I got this postcard in Gold Beach. I was wondering if either of you have been to Gold Beach. I have not been to Gold Beach. No. Is it made out of gold? Are there octopi everywhere? Nick C. has sent us this Franz Xavier Messerschmitt postcard. Mm. I picked this up at the Getty Center in Los Angeles before going to see Nick Cave in the Bad Seeds. Oh, nice. John Finn's wife was something of a mystery. <laughs> Underneath his coat was a red right hand. <laughs> and Yussi says, greetings from Finland. Have you guys ever seen the movie Iron Sky? I have not seen it. Iron Sky? I think it's a Finnish movie. Yeah, that would crush us all. And lastly, Patrick has sent us this 3D postcard. Oh, this is going to be hard to catch. If you ever find yourself in Toronto and want to do the most Canadian thing ever, tickets to the Hockey Hall of Fame, where I work, are on me. Oh, that's nice to know. I would actually do that. Because while I don't like watching or playing sports, I enjoy the history of sports. Yeah. I like hearing facts and, and stories and things like that. Yeah, and then you can have conversations with people about it later. Right. And act like you know what you're talking about. Toronto. I've never been to Toronto. I've been there three times. You took one of my trips to Toronto. <laughs> Let's open some packages. Oh. <clears throat> Put your wine down. There's work to do. This is from Christopher in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It is a comic book. It is a Logan's Run comic book. Oh, Check cool. it out. And it has... What's his name? Box. Box. Fish. Sea greens. And plankton. <laughs> This is from T.A. Epley, and we've got a drawing here. I think I recognize that. Ah. Brazil! Our hearts were entertained in June. Matt, Craig, and Tona, happy holidays, folks. I've included a sketch from Son of T.A. And a few other gifts. T.A. has a son? You've met the guy. I, ha I haven't. And he gives us uh, some DVDs here. These are movies he suggests if we feature Black History Month on the show. Oh. Three films from the 1960s. Story of a Three-Day Pass with Melvin Van Peebles. Oh, I've heard of this one. This is The Intruder. Directed by Roger Corman, starring William Shatner. Hmm. A look back at integration. And lastly, we have a little John Ford film here. Sergeant Rutledge. Oh, he was talking about this on Facebook. This has got Woody Strode. Okay, yeah. The Ford Report postscript starring Cowboy of Color, Woody Strode. Thanks, T.A. I've been curious about that Shatner movie, the Roger Corman one, for a while. I've never, ever heard of it. And now, viewer questions. If you have a question for us, you can leave it in the comments, and we might answer it on a viewer questions segment. This is a question we've already answered, but I've figured out a better answer for it. Mark from Minneapolis asks, if you were haunted by any famous dead person in a wacky comedy way, who would it be? Yes. We answered this last time. I said Groucho Marx. You said Cary Grant. Both good answers. But there's only one answer to this question. I would want to be haunted by Mr. Chicken himself, Don Knotts. <laughs> Here's how it would go down. The ghost of Don Knotts would show up, and it would just be like a regular visit from a friend. He's like, oh, well, nice place you got here. <laughs> oh, 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 black cats. Oh, those make me nervous. And we just hang out, chatting, and eventually I ask Don Knotts, what the thing he's scared of the most? Ghosts. 
And I say, Don Knotts, you are a ghost. You've been dead for 15 years. And he loses his mind. He starts shivering and jangling about. <laughs> his eyes bug out. He becomes afraid of his own body. Oh, whoa. And eventually he just implodes and goes back to the spirit realm because he can't handle it. And then next time he comes back, he's forgotten the whole thing. Yeah, this is so just a recurring... The cycle continues. I'd like to re-answer something from okay. a long time ago. Someone once asked about a scene in a movie I love that I would love to change. And the scene is in the movie Shaun of the Dead, which is my favorite of the of Edgar, Edgar Wright movies. Yeah. yeah. Shaun's mother has been bitten by a zombie, so she turns into a zombie and Shaun has to kill her. And it really puts the brakes on the comedy of the scene because it's so heartbreaking for Shaun. And really what should have happened was that Ed, his best friend, should have taken the gun from him and killed his mom because that's what you do for your best friend. Any of them should have taken the gun from him. And that could have led to comedy. And that could I can't have... believe you shot my mom! Yeah, that... I had to! I you guess, couldn't do exactly. it! You know, that would have bolstered up the heroism and the bond between And guys. the bond between the two. Yeah. Kermit's a really difficult director. He does like 50 takes. Yeah. Puts his actors through hell. He's the Lars von Trier of Muppets. <laughs> to show you something. Zip. Zip. <laughs> After all these decades, Grover's still a waiter. I guess his acting career just never took off. Me having a bad cookie day. Cookie Monster feels terrible. He hasn't had his insulin yet today. Another season, another reason for stealing Whoopi. You might never make it back home again. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever? Those are Patinkin's actual eyebrows. He skipped plucking and tweezing for a week, and that's what happens. Did you think of a plan to stop that Elmo pest yet? Not yet, boss. Give him back his blanket, but first infest it with smallpox. Bert stops the film again. He just can't take it. Elmo didn't get his blanket back. How can it end this way? Bert and Ernie as Greek chorus. <laughs> It's at this point in the show when we recommend an episode from our back catalog for you to watch if you missed it or revisit it. It's in the middle of the Christmas season, so I gotta recommend our episode from Season 5, Miracle on 34th Street. I released this episode too late in the Christmas season, and so it kind of got screwed for views because after Christmas, nobody wanted to watch it anymore. Yeah. But it's Christmas now, and you should go check it out, and it's a good episode. Doesn't appear as often on TV as it used to back when we were kids. It's the film that got Natalie Wood into the Hall of Fame. Third appearance of Edmund Gwynn. Mm -hmm. Who's still not in the Hall of Fame. And you know why, Gwynn. <laughs> There's a link to that episode at the end of this episode. Click it. And enjoy some holiday cheer on us. That's right. Two more packages. Yeah, we got a lot to go through here. This one is gift wrapped. It's from Emily. Matt, Craig, and Tona, I did the math and I've watched Welcome to the Basement over 230 hours. This book has been my New Year's resolution. I would recommend it to other viewers who want a solid intro to classic movies. You continue to inspire me. It's in a bag. Turner Classic Movies, The Essentials, 52 must-see movies and why they matter. Hmm, that's one per week. How many of those have I seen? Lay one on me. Uh, The Searchers. Seen it. Winchester 73. Seen it. Well, that's a fun one. That's a, yeah. Western Gaps filled out of the past. Half seen it. Double Indemnity. Seen it. Swing Time. Seen, seen it on, it on the, the show. show. Well, this is from our friends Claudio and Ryan in Silver Spring, Maryland. I found more stuff we'd gotten for Matt and Craig. I believe this is going to you because I have one just like it. Cinemaps. Oh, yeah. This is something my, my wife gave me this last year. I love this book. It takes a movie and it maps out the route that the main characters go through. So that is Star Wars A New Hope. So it goes all over from Tatooine to the Death Star and even has the Death Star's route. And now the Ford Report. My quest to watch 13 movies by legendary grizzled filmmaker John Ford in 2018 concludes. The final movie in the Ford Report is a little movie called The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Mm. I think this is John Ford's greatest film. Thank and, you. And I think it's one of the great films. It's the last Western. This is the place where the Old West has gone to die. Mm -hmm. And it quite literally dies. John Wayne is playing his most iconic character. It's the one where he calls everybody Pilgrim. He is a hero. He's punished for his heroism. And John Wayne does that thing that he does so well where he 
hardly has to do anything, and it's powerful. He's in a burning building, and he sits down. Wow, that is powerful. <laughs> it has a very unique story structure. It starts in the present, and then the entire movie is an extended flashback. And this leads to a lot of extraordinary moments. The introduction of Andy Devine in this mm -hmm. is fascinating. He's this kind, gentle old man who you just love off the bat. And we go into the past, and he's this cowardly, contemptible buffoon. Yeah. You're watching him in the past, and you're thinking, well, what? How did, how does he get to be the, the other guy? Great storytelling. And Jimmy Stewart is a fine actor. Mm -hmm. One of the greats. But the best piece of acting I've ever seen him do is picking a steak up off the floor. He picks it up and he slams it on the plate. And he's so frustrated and angry and it's so real. And it's got Lee Marvin as the title character. Oh, Lee, or the, Marvin. Yeah. Lee Marvin is most wicked portrayal mm -hmm. of, of ever in his well, career. Yeah, Liberty Valance. It's, talk about a name right there. Well, he's really, he's, he's Satan. Mm -hmm. His name is Liberty, which means freedom. Mm -hmm. and Sa Satan is all about do whatever you want. Yeah. And Liberty does whatever he wants. Yeah, and, um, and... And, of course, then we have Jimmy Stewart's character, Stoddard, who's the angel. Very much a civilization coming to the frontier movie. And the civilization arrives in the form of Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, after him, the Old West has become a garden, as they yes. say. It's no longer the wild frontier. This is not the final Ford Report. That will be on our next unboxing where I'm going to look back over the movies that I've watched this year and kind of give my final thoughts on them. Yeehaw! We have a few more donors here. Michael, Stephanie, Jennifer, Eric, Ashton, Anne, Eden, James, Nathan, T.A., Maura, Melanie, Joe, Melanie, Abigail, Kelsey, Emily, Gail, Jonathan, Stephen, Eric, Roger, Alfred, Shelby, Patrick, Joseph, Andres, Reed, John, Anthony, Jeff, and Lindsay. Thank you all. Let's open those final two packages. I don't mind if we do. Big or little? I want the big one. Of course you do. This is from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen. I've learned now to look at all sides of the box. And here we have a drawing. Bats! <laughs> this is a box of mystery. Many magazines were killed when packing this box. Matt. Matt. <laughs> we understand what that means. Yeah. Matt, enjoy the records and the sticker. There's records in that box. Oh, this is cool. What we have here is a vintage postcard guide. Oh. 1,500 pictures with prices. I'm going to give that to you. Oh, thank you. And keep that with your postcard collection. Oh, man, it smells like an antique store. And we have mm. several actual vintage postcards here that I've been told not to throw. That looks like Teddy Roosevelt. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. I'm a fan of his. Ike Eisenhower, the old rail splitter himself, uh, Abe Lincoln. That's right. This is a Memorial Day one, and this is a Halloween postcard. Cool! Mm, very nice. We'll have to look these up in the big book. And then, of course, there's Garbage Pail Kids. What else we got there? J.R.R. Tolkien's Poems and Songs of Middle Earth. Oh, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil's on this. Petty the Winkle. The Man in the Moon Came Down Too Soon. Cowardly Custard, featuring the works and music of Noel Coward. Here we've got an old favorite, An Evening with Mike Nichols and Elaine May, and oh, yes. the, my, the Doctor's record. I have both of these, so I'm going to give these to you. Oh. Uh, looks like this is from Zav. A tragically hip. A tragically hip. I used to listen to them in college. Yes, one of the best names of a band ever. We've unboxed all the boxes. The basement is a mess, just like on Christmas morning. And we want to thank you for all the packages that you've sent us and for the donations that you've made on the website. And uh, we love spending time with you here in the basement. Hey, and it's the holiday season. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate anything else, happy holidays to you all. And now watch this.